everybody and welcome to AutoCAD 3D Lectures with your instructor Elia Guindas. We are now in chapter 4, second lesson, and the previous lesson of course we covered Revolve and uh, all its variations, and then followed up with Shell Command, and then uh, this lesson we're going to go on with Taper and Loft, so two additional really important tools that uh, you'll use in curve design. Now the environment is pretty much the same. Uh, same uh, ribbon on top, uh, 3D modeling ribbon, toolbars, nothing new, and of course the cascading menus and command line. And the units are in architectural, so make sure your screen remains the same from the previous lesson. Alright, the first command we're going to cover is taper, and uh, it pretty much does exactly what it advertises. It tapers or creates a gradient on one or more sides of a 3D object. A simple example, and one we'll actually model soon, is a plastic wastebasket commonly found in any office. If you have one nearby, take a look at it. Its base is slightly smaller rectangle than the top rim, and the reason for such taper is because the nature of a plastic molding and the plastic manufacturing process. Another useful result is that you can now stack these wastebaskets one on top of another. So we're going to practice on a uh, rectangular box. And I'm going to go ahead and draw it first. And uh, it could be really any size. I'm going to choose a, a typical uh, size for a wastebasket, maybe about 20 by 15 inches. Okay, there it is. We're going to go into 3D. And go ahead and extrude it out to about a height of 30. There it is. About the typical size of a wastebasket. Now to access the taper command, you cannot uh, type it in. You have to use the cascading menus under modify solid editing and it's called taper faces. Oh, there it is, taper faces. And you can also use uh, toolbars, which is right here, taper faces. And also on the ribbon under the solid tab, it's right here, taper faces. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that one on the ribbon doesn't really matter. Uh, the first thing is going to ask you to select the faces. Now notice I'm in a wireframe and that's really the better choice as opposed to solid right now because you can see all the faces. So it's, we're going to remove uh, or select rather the four faces that are going to be tapered. Now that's not going to be the top or the bottom. It's going to be the front face, the side face, and then the two back ones. Now when you choose the back ones be careful not to choose it from the top because you'll end up selecting the top one choose right through the second one into the third and then right through the first into the fourth and it'll become dashed. Alright, when you're done hit enter, specify base point. Now this is going to be where the taper is starting from since it's a waste basket we want it to be smaller at the bottom, larger at the top. So we're going to begin the taper here at the midpoint. Doesn't really matter, we could have picked any of these midpoints. And then all the way straight down to the bottom, midpoint right here. Okay, and the final question is specify the taper angle and don't make it too big, maybe uh, 4 degrees, so just type in 4 and watch what happens. As soon as you click enter, AutoCAD processes the shape and it tapers the bottom. Now I'm going to go shade and uh, twist it around a little bit, or 3D orbit rather, and uh, you can kind of see that at the bottom is somewhat smaller than the top, which is a taper of 4 degrees. Alright, go ahead and try this. Pause the video and um, try this on your own. Make sure you understand and how you're able to select the faces carefully. Meanwhile, I'm going to erase this and move on to the next command called loft. Now, loft is a relatively recent addition to the AutoCAD toolbox added along with many other 3D enhancements in AutoCAD 2007. It's another command that's been borrowed from engineering solid modeling world and it's one of the more useful and versatile ones. Despite some rather complex surface and part modeling programming under the hood with Loft, as far as AutoCAD is concerned, or AutoCAD end user, that's you, the command works on a very simple principle. It connects together open or closed profiles. All you have to do is pick those profiles in the order you want them lofted and AutoCAD connects the dots, so to speak, and creates either a surface, if the profile is open, or a solid, 
if the profile is closed. And I'll give you examples of both. So let's take a very simple example of a classic wooden barrel. In this particular case, yes, you can use Revolve to model a barrel because it's symmetric about the center axis. But we don't often have such convenience, so we need to use Loft instead. So the barrel's lengthwise profile can be modeled as three circles, one after another, with the first and third representing the top and bottom, and the second slightly larger one representing the fatter uh, middle part. So let's try that out. I'm going to draw a circle, random size, looks like that. Then I'm going to draw another circle based at the center of the big one, and it'll look like this. Okay, zoom out a little bit. Now what we want to do is uh, move one of these circles to the top to represent the top of the barrel and then to the bottom to represent the bottom of the barrel. So I'm going to rotate the UCS icon so I can move it up relative to me, the observer. And I'm going to go ahead and move this straight up using ortho right about here. Just eyeball it. It doesn't really matter for our purposes right now. Then I'm going to go ahead and copy this guy right down here, also eyeballed. So you see what you did? You created a path for the loft to follow. So now we're going to start the loft command, and you uh, can type it in this time, loft, L-O-F-T, or you can use the cascading menus, draw modeling loft, that's right here, draw modeling loft or you can use the uh, modeling toolbar which is right here loft or the solid tab solid loft right here which I'll pick that one now what you want to do is pick them in order you don't have to but to make a barrel you do because this, this will be the direction of the loft so I'm going to select one two and then three and the loft is created and you want to hit enter at this point although there are some other options and one more option uh, we'll explore a little bit later is under this blue drop down arrow but for now just hit enter and that's it your loft is done to see what you've done go to shade mode and there's the barrel very useful command so take a moment to pause the video and just try it uh, just up to this point in the meantime I'm going to undo this, go back to the circles, actually we want all three, and I want to show you a slight variation of this. I'm going to go to the top view, click from here to here, and I'm going to trim these into arcs. Erase this, now go back to 3D, and I want to go ahead and loft this. So I'm going to type in loft this time. Select them also. One, two, three. Hit enter and enter again. Let's go ahead and shade this. And see what happened in this case? These were open uh, profiles, arcs instead of circles. And they created a surface. So keep that in mind. This might be useful to create in mechanical design a cover of some sort. So this is the way you do it. Completely open. All right. Let's try uh, some other variations of this command. Let me go ahead and erase this. And this. Now let's try a rectangle and a circle. And the reason I'm going to try it is because the true power of loft shows when you need to smoothly merge profiles of various shapes, sizes, and locations. AutoCAD's help files have an extensive rather, list of items that <clears throat> qualifies cross-sections, so be sure to take a look. Sometimes you may hit a snag in performing loft due to unusual combination of elements, but as long as they are not on the same plane, uh, you should be able to complete the operation. And of course, they're on the same plane uh, the way, uh, say, two plates on a dinner table are on the same plane. So let me demonstrate this version with a rectangle and, and circle. I'm going to draw a rectangle once I rotate my UCS icon around the x-axis because I want to stand up this rectangle. Then I'm going to create
create a midpoint line and create a circle at that midpoint line, just so it's on the same plane. Then rotate the UCS back to where it was, erase the guideline, and move the circle out a little bit, some distance away. And now I'm going to go ahead and loft again, selecting one, then the other, just two elements, and see what happened. It was connected together. And if I go ahead and shade, this is what you get. So you can see one shape got morphed into another. Certainly a very powerful tool. All right, go ahead and try that as well. In the meantime, I'm going to show you one last uh, example with Loft. And I'm going to reset everything and erase this guy. I'm actually, just going to go ahead and erase the, uh, yeah, well, erase the whole shape. All right, what I want to do now is uh, create two arcs and create a twisted surface. So I'm going to draw a circle. There's a circle. I'm going to trim the circle and then mirror it right back. So we have two pieces of it. Could have also used the broken command for that, the break command for this. So you have two pieces. All right, I'm going to go to 3D. We're going to raise the circle up around the x axis. 90 degrees and then we're going to move this bottom piece out a certain distance okay and for a little extra effect rotate it in 3d around the y-axis and the center point being right here let's do 90 degrees there it is now let's try to loft one then the other and we have ourselves a complex surface shade and take a look so this is certainly something you could not have done earlier in any other way but you've fused these surfaces together so you can see how with a little bit of practice and uh, I guess a creative imagination you can create some very sophisticated curvature for piping design, uh, really anything. As long as you get those profiles right and put them in the right location. So you should already be thinking of ways you can apply this. Alright, go ahead and try this. And uh, let me erase this. And that should be it for this uh, lesson. The next lesson we're going to cover path extrusion and sweep and then we're going to uh, most likely add a fourth lesson where we're going to do some examples because we want to keep these lessons to between 10 and 15 minutes. Alright, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.